So you've seen the title of this uh, video and you know that you're probably here to come roast me for saying anything positive about glutamine. So let's get this out of the way. I'm not really excited for the roasting. I have said many times I'm not a fan of glutamine for muscle recovery or growth or any type of muscle protein synthesis re related benefits. I prefer glutamine for gut health and that's why that's the only reason I ever look at that and I actually kind of talk down when people put glutamine and stuff for muscle recovery. So why am I here to tell you about microencapsulated glutamine from caged muscle? Well, I think it's kind of interesting. I think it kind of attacks one of the reasons that glutamine itself in its free form uh, does not really work as well as, I just think it's interesting. I want to put the science out there for you guys to understand. So I figure I'm gonna put a video together talking today in theory about what this might do and you can take it up for what it's worth. Welcome to Price Plow. There is a study that was uh, finished on the product. It is going to be published soon. It is positive. I've seen it, but I can't tell you about it because that would break my NDA with Cage Muscle and that just wouldn't be a nice thing to do. But I think it would be interesting to share the mechanism of why they think this might help out the ingredient and leave it for you guys to you know digest for yourselves until I can come out with a video on the actual published study showing how it worked for them. Why is glutamine bad? L-glutamine is not that great of an ingredient for muscle protein synthesis because of a thing called the first pass effect. Now you've heard me talk about how glutamine can help a lot with the gut, how it can help with uh, your digestive health and stuff like that. And one of the reasons that happens is this first pass effect, which ends up being a negative for the muscle protein synthesis side of things. Basically, the gut uses up so much of the glutamine that you get from your diet, because you can get this from lots of different sources like meats, that it never actually makes it to its intended spot if you're using it for muscle protein synthesis. It doesn't actually get to the bloodstream in an efficient way, so we never know really what is the actual benefit of getting it there. The theorized uh, reason that you would be using it for muscle protein synthesis is because it is the most abundant amino acid in muscle tissue. Now, I've always found that reasoning kind of interesting because in my opinion, if it's the most abundant amino acid, why do we need any more of it? Not only that, it's actually a uh, conditionally essential amino acid in some cases, but for the most part regarded as a non-essential amino acid, which means that our bodies can actually endogenously produce it inside of our body bodies pretty much. So why would we want to supplement more of it? Well, there were a couple studies back in 2010 that showed that it is possible that this helps with muscle protein synthesis. Now, those were using L-glutamine, so I've always kind of just thrown those out. However, this one study coming out on the microencapsulated glutamine idea is pretty positive and more on that to come later. So in any case, glutamine doesn't really work all that well because of just that reason. It gets used up in the gut and never actually really makes it to the blood. So what's one way that we could get it into the bloodstream where you go inject it if that's what you're interested in, but I don't think most of you guys are gonna to wanna to do that. Sources of injectable glutamine are definitely not uh, reputable if you're buying it off the internet. And it just is kind of a not so fun thing to do every time you need to get glutamine. But Cage Muscle put together an interesting idea, microencapsulated glutamine, which basically uses the same technology they used on their CreaClear, which made creatine monohydrate microencapsulated, which made it blend better in water. It was supposedly made it hurt people's tummies less. In my opinion, I was not a big fan of creatine monohydrate being microencapsulated. I thought that it was a waste of money uh, on that ingredient. Creatine monohydrate works really well for me. However, L-glutamine does not work very well for that intended purpose. So if we microencapsulate it, maybe we can get it past the stomach into the gut where it can be absorbed and actually put into the bloodstream for muscle protein synthesis. So that is the main goal here and that's what the study aimed to prove. I'm still healthily skeptic over this. I've been using it for about three and a half weeks. Um, I feel a small change in recovery. I've been training on a high frequency plan, which normally makes me very sore. I've been less sore than I would expect to be given the training that I'm doing. However, at the same time, my lifestyle is also set up for this. I do this every day. I've been doing this for years. My training is uh, periodized for recovery. My recovery and sleep are optimal as I can make them. My diet is on point. I'm getting over 500 grams of carbohydrates from clean sources every day. Um, I sleep with a CPAP. I do a lot of different things for my recovery. So adding in 20 grams of microencapsulated glutamine isn't the biggest change for me if we're being honest here. Um, I do 
want to say that I do feel a difference. However, that difference could be placebo. It could be extremely anecdotal, which isn't really the best data. Although in my case, I do work off of my own data as well as scientific data. So on that side, I'm not gonna give you too hard of an opinion because it does work for me in some manner, but I don't know if that mileage will vary for you. So in any case, uh, this, this, is, this is the video here. I wanna tell you guys that there's a study coming out eventually, but uh, you know, unfortunately, Cage Muscle produced the product before the study's out, which I personally thought was maybe a little bit irresponsible because this product's gonna be sold and there's no real study to back it up. I can't tell you guys the claims that come out of the study. I really wish I could because in my opinion, it is, it is kind of significant that this is happening. But um, this is all I have. This is all I have, a theory. Well, glutamine doesn't work normally. This technology could uh, change that and I used it for three and a half weeks and it made me less sore. So, but this is how ingredients come out. This is how things start, right? With just a small step in the right direction. So hopefully we see this study come out very soon and I can share that with you more. Um, if you guys are interested in being part of this experiment with me, you can get the microencapsulated glutamine for a, uh, more of a discount with coupon code PRICEPLOW. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna tell you that it's making a huge difference for me, but I did feel like it did make some difference. And I think that the, sci the science is possibly there with the mechanism of getting it through the stomach. So. Um, uh, if you are a believer in glutamine, check it out. Let me know what you think. I'd love to talk about it and see if maybe you get the same results that I did. Um, in any case, I really appreciate you making this far in the video. This is a shorter one because it's not a full formula. It's one ingredient with uh, not many studies to back it, but an interesting change in how it was manufactured. So I appreciate you watching this far in the video. If there's anything that I can talk to you guys about with the ingredients, please comment below, let me know. If for everything else, you can go over to pricepilot.com slash caged muscle for any news reviews and interviews on the product. In any case, this is Ben from Pricepilot signing out. Have a great day. Welcome to Pricepilot.